Good morning, and welcome to the 13th first Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Word of God today calls us to be aware of the benevolence of God. The divine benevolence includes mercy toward all his creatures. Jesus acts mercifully toward someone who was considered a notorious sinner. We trust that this mercy is given even to ourselves. People were scandalized when Jesus expressed his desire to stay at the home of a tax collector who had harmed many people. If ever we have acted in a way which has harmed people, we accept the comfort of knowing that justice can be fact, be restorative. God's justice certainly is restorative. Please stand as we welcome our presiding priest, Father Louis. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Amen. In today's gospel, we hear the story of Zacchaeus, who wants to encounter the Lord. And when he encounters the Lord, a sudden, he experiences a, a sudden conversion to change his life. Every time we come at Mass, we encounter the Lord not just in sacred scripture, but in the Eucharist. And so we take time to reflect on our own spiritual life and how, we're, how we are letting the Lord convert us into living holy lives. And sometimes we fail to live a holy life. We mess up, we commit sins. And so my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
to this Mass, we pray for Father Ernesto Jaramillo on his 50th birthday, for the eternal repose of the souls of Maria Robles, Father Juan Enriquez, Mando Fauze, Estela Diaz, and Francis Petroco. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the Word of God. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from a balance, or a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things, and you overlook people's sins that they may repent. For you love all things that are, and loathe nothing that you have made. For what you hated, you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it? Or be preserved had it not been called forth by you? But you spare all things because they are yours, O Lord and lover of souls, for your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore, you rebuke offenders little by little, warm them and remind them of the sins they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith. That the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him in accord with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your minds suddenly or to be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there. And said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Today's Gospel is not a parable, right? Parables are stories Jesus tells us to tell us, to convey to us some moral um, conviction, moral right. Today's story is an actual interaction between Jesus and Zacchaeus. I don't know if you guys have watched the, the TV series, The Chosen. Absolutely recommend you watch that. I absolutely love that. It's basically a TV series on Jesus' life. And I love how they portray Jesus and everyone in it. So take a look at it, watch it, find it. It's free online. I think it's on YouTube or if you download the app, The Chosen. Watch it. It's awesome. But as I was... Of this, this is an actual interaction with Jesus, right? Jesus walking, going about his business, doing great things. And we have this man Zacchaeus. Now we can see this as a parable. What is this significance of this actual interaction for us as human beings, right? Zacchaeus is us, you know, us living in sin. You know, you can reflect on, you know, what our favorite sins are. 
what are the sins we love to commit regularly? We might go to confession, next you know it, maybe an hour later, minutes later, seconds later, we're committing the same sin, right? Whether that's um, judging others harshly, cheesiness, um, um, addictions, alcohol, pornography, whatever it may be, right? Violence, whatever it may be, mil- uh, mistreating our family members, spouse, kids, whatever it is, right? Where is the chaos? Because Zacchaeus at that time is a chief tax collector. Tax collector. He's not just any tax collector. He's the head honcho. He's the boss. So for years, this tax collector, who was a Jewish person, was also stealing money from his people. And especially during Roman occupation, the Jewish people were the poorest of the poor. Imagine him collecting taxes and overcharging. How he was hated by people. And so... This guy living in sin, stealing from others, making money of him, being rich off of them, wants to encounter Jesus. There's something in him that says, I need to go see who this Jesus guy is, right? Maybe when he was young, he learned, of course, every Jewish person, when they were young, especially the males, they learned scripture. They studied it. They read it. That's immediately they put it into practice, right? That's obvious with Zacchaeus, right? You could read all of the Bible, but if you don't put it into practice, we end up like Zacchaeus, right? And so this is what happens to him. There's a movement within his heart and his soul to see who Jesus is. What does he do? Short guy, right? Probably the same height as Father Ernesto. <laughs> Good thing he's not here. <laughs> so what does he do, right? He climbs up a tree. It's like, oh, I can't see. Just these, all these tall people. Right? I can't see. He runs up a tree to go see Jesus. What does Jesus do? He looks up. Calls him by name. Zacchaeus, come down quickly. I'm going to go stay at your house. Now, this first part, him running up the tree. What does that signify for, signify, sig, signify for us? Us running out of the sins that we commit. When we're in sin, we're surrounded by darkness. We feel terrible. Right? We commit sin, whatever it may be, and we feel terrible afterwards. And that's us in the sewage of our sins, in the trash of our sins. And it's dark around us. We have to get up somewhere high to get out of it. So what happens? He climbs up a tree. What does this tree signify? The cross. Right? Who's on the cross? Jesus. He runs up this tree to get out of the sin, to get out of all the nastiness that he has accumulated through so many years of his life, you know, maybe decades of his life, sitting, stealing from other people, not sharing, right? He climbs up the street and Jesus sees him. Come down quickly. That is the peak of our conversion as we come down with Jesus. And what does Jesus say, say, tell him? I'm going to stay at your house. Before we receive communion, what do we say? Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In Spanish, yo no soy digno de enter en mi casa. Right? It's even more specific, my house. Right? And so this is, this is, this is our spiritual life, life right here. This story, this real story of Zacchaeus encountering Jesus is our spiritual life. Going up the cross is going to confession. Jesus, I'm sorry, I messed up. Please forgive me. And what is this going into his house? Is as Bishop Barron, Robert Barron calls it, the invasion of grace. Grace enters within us. And the only thing grace can do is move us to conversion. What does Zacchaeus do when he's at his house? What does he say? Lord, I'm going to give half of everything I own to the poor. Imagine Bill Gates, Elon Musk, having a conversion and saying, I'm going to give half of my wealth to the poor. Imagine how many billions of dollars would go towards the poor if they had this conversion. And so this conversion happened because Jesus, invi- Jesus has that invitation for 
Zacchaeus. And the same goes with us. When we encounter Jesus, there is an invitation for Him to dwell in here. And that's our spiritual life. We go, we sin, we mess up. Okay, we're human beings, we're all weak, right? We're all in need of God's grace. We realize we've messed up. There's a movement with us to get us out of the trash. We run up the cross and encounter Jesus there at the cross. And that cross could be the sacrament of reconciliation because a lot of people are afraid of confessing. You know, they think I bite. I don't bite, okay? <laughs> Some priests do, but I don't, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so we run to confession. We encounter Jesus there. Yes, you might, hear the, you might hear my voice, right? You might hear me saying things to you, but through my ordination, through any priest's ordination, is Jesus speaking through us. It's a sacrifice we make as priests that we say, Jesus, use my, my voice, my facial expressions, my hand gestures for your will to help this person out. And for me, I go to confession too. I go to confession so I could experience God's forgiveness, right? And so when you go to confession, you, you, don't, you, you might hear my voice, but in reality, it's Jesus using my voice, especially when I say the words, I absolve you of your sins. Yo te absuelvo de tus pecados. When you hear those words, it is definitely not me. Because who am I to forgive sins, right? I'd be a heretic. I'd be condemned to hell if I could forgive sins. But through ordination, through my humility, saying, you know, Jesus, use my voice. You hear those words being spoken by Jesus. And when you hear those words, a conversion happens. Okay, I need to do better. I need to be better at whatever I'm doing. I can't be doing the same sense over and over and over again. And there will be people who criticize you. You know, there are people in the story we hear criticizing Jesus. Oh, he's going to stay at a sinner's house. How many people, how many of us, once we begin this conversion to Christ, have been made fun of, have been teased, have been ridiculed? Why, why, why are you going to Mass on Sunday? Why waste your time on Sunday? Be watching football, football season's on. You could be doing something else, whatever it may be. Just don't go to church. Why, why be a Christian? God doesn't exist. What does the case do? Is when he stands firm. And that's when he says, I will give half of my wealth to people, to the poor. If I extorted money, imagine how many years he was doing this. I will give them four times more than what I stole from them. Conversion. And what does Jesus say? This man is safe because he seeks what was lost. We may have confirmation. We might come to school or to church here every Sunday. We might have gone to Catholic school. But if we don't have a daily conversion, we will end up like Zacchaeus, back in our sins. Right? And so this conversion is a daily process. And how can we encounter Jesus daily? In prayer. Take time to pray quietly. Right? Maybe... Make the sacrifice of waking up an hour before you normally wake up, All right? I, I was talking to a seminarian friend of mine, and we were talking about, like, oh, yeah, did you get up at 4.30 in the morning? Yeah, but as you get older, it gets a little later, <laughs> at least for me. I, mean, I used to get up, like, uh, at 4.30 in the morning, get ready, and by 5.15, I was in the chapel of the seminary to do my prayers. Sometimes I would fall asleep. <laughs> My friend would wake up, come in to pray, you know, and they say, Louis, you're snoring. Ooh, sorry. Imagine me snoring and echoing throughout the, church, the, the chapel. Oh, my gosh. It was bad. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I'll change my time. But take time. Maybe make that sacrifice. We don't have to make sacrifices outside of Lent, okay? Lent isn't just the only place we make sacrifices. We make sacrifices daily, right? Parents, you know this. <laughs> Your kids will wake you up in the middle of the night, make that sacrifice to get up. You can stay in bed. <laughs> you can stay in bed, but your poor child will be suffering. Right? Sacrifices. We make sacrifices daily. And we encounter Jesus in those sacrifices. Okay? Um, the other day, I, was, I went to go visit the confirmation students. And Pat, I guess, was, had an extra group. Or she didn't want to do that group. So I was like, okay. She asked me to be one of these small groups. 
Man, trying to get something out of teenagers is like pulling teeth. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what, what, what can I talk to them that could, I could get a reaction out of them, right? To help them encounter Christ in their life. I was like, you know what? We have elections coming up. That's always a hot, there's always hot button issues with elections, right? We have Proposition 1 that tells us that, that if we vote yes, we're going to approve um, state funds to promote abortions. If we vote no, we say no. And so I was talking to them about abortion. You know, this is a hot topic issue, right? This is either, either make people mad or go crazy, whatever it may be, right? And so talk to them about it. Crickets, nothing. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's like a hot button topic that these teenagers care about. Talked about gay marriage. Talked about the sanctity of marriage. Nothing. I'm like, okay. <clears throat> so that same evening, I was praying on it, like really praying. I'm like, okay, what in the world is going on with our young people? You know, do I need to make a TikTok to get things, you know, to get them to, 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 to have a, a reaction? I realize not just teenagers, but a lot of people do not want to encounter Jesus. They don't want to encounter Jesus. Some, for some reason, they don't want to encounter Jesus. Why well, can't they know the reason? Because when we encounter Jesus, we're called to convert. We're called to be better. That means whatever we were doing before, the sins that we did, or whatever life we were living, we will realize that's a lie if it wasn't conformed to the will of Christ, right? And I, I mean, you guys know my story. This is what happened to me, right? Broke up with my girlfriend, crying on the floor of St. Mark's University Parish at UC Santa Barbara in the chapel in front of the tabernacle. And Jesus told me, hey, try the seminary, All right? And before then, I was thinking, you know, this, I'm a college student. It's, it's okay to party Wednesday through Sunday, take a break Monday and Tuesday, right? That was normal. Especially in Santa Barbara, oh Lord, right? It was okay to go clubbing, get drunk every time, get blackout drunk. That, that was fine. Encounter Jesus in that chapel. I was going to Mass. I served Mass drunk a couple of times. My pastor could smell the probably the tequila from my breath when I would serve Mass as a monaguillo, as an altar server. Sad. That encounter with Jesus right there in that chapel. When I asked them, what do you want from me? And I heard those words, needed me to chart, start changing. I could have ignored it. I wanted to ignore it. I don't want to be a priest. But the invasion of grace was just too strong. And this is, I think a lot of people are afraid of encountering Jesus wherever they're in their life because they're so comfortable in how they're living. I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, I look back, I, I talk to friends about, I reminisce about my Santa Barbara days, and I'm like, if I do that now, I'd be dead. <laughs> I'm too old for that, right? <laughs> and so, that's the conversion, my brothers and sisters. When we encounter Christ, we have to have a conversion. And every time we come here, we encounter Christ in the Eucharist. Yes, in sacred scripture, when we read it. But more importantly, we encounter Him in the Eucharist. And so we take time this week, your homework, <laughs> your homework is to take time this week to reflect on how you've encountered Jesus in your life and how that has helped you in converting your life to be more like Christ, to be more like Jesus. Because when we are about more like Jesus, we don't lose, we might, we lose friends that want to party with us, right? Like, sorry, that's, a, that's, that's the way I, I lost friends after I stopped saying yes to going out Wednesday night. Thursday night, eh, Friday nights I go out. Saturdays no more. Actually, serve sober on Sunday nights, right? I lost friends, but I also gained friends who are my friends to this day that are solid Catholics who have helped me in that conversion. And so, yes, we are afraid to change. We're afraid to lose people, but by the grace of God, we will gain so much more for this. And as Jesus says, we will gain salvation, not just for ourselves, but we will help others find Jesus. Okay, so take time this week to reflect on your relationship with Jesus and your own faith conversion and to see how we can continue changing. Because we don't just have a conversion one day and that's it. No, it's a daily conversion to be better people. Amen?
I do have a TikTok, but I'm not going to share that with people. <laughs> Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, He may come down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess from baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. When conversion takes place, a person establishes healthy relationships with the people in their life. Thankful for the ongoing surprises which emerge from our continuing conversion, we place our hearts in the service of God's kingdom. For the people of God, the church, that we respond to God's call the way Zacchaeus responded to Jesus, with eagerness for turning toward a new way of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will participate in civil society by voting and then by following through and calling those we elect to accountability. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the governments and industries of the world will find ways to obtain mercy for those who are practically particularly oppressed by debt, taxes, or other problems which impede their ability to live. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That processes of education will set people free from any sense of powerlessness and allow the release of hidden personal gifts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are in mourning will discover in their sadness the gift of union with him who was pleased to be our ser suffering servant. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the direction of all who have died, especially for those who have died recently, and for all those whose anniversaries occur at this time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Ernesto on his 50th birthday today, for him let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the eternal repose of the souls of Maria Robles, Father Juan Enriquez, Mando Fauce, Estela Diaz, and Francis Petroco, let us pray to the Lord. Lord In a moment of silence, let us present our own needs and petitions to our loving God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord In a special way, also let us pray for our our young people, our students in confirmation, those in RCIC and RCIA, that the Holy Spirit may be inflamed within them, for them and for their catechists, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, you proclaim the mercy of your Father in the midst of a chaotic world. You likewise call every one of us to make our part of the world a place of hospitality, where we discover our union with the God who has walked our streets and alleys and showed mercy to one who climbed the tree. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated at this time. I forgot. <laughs> we have a, have a seat, have a seat. We have our dismissal of our RCIC students. So if you're here to be dismissed, may God bless you and walk with you as you walk towards. <laughs>
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might be the beans of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted prayers as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving things that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and Mark, our regional Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dared to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, guys. May this be with the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, bring it through life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For our brothers and sisters at home, let us make an act of spiritual communion. Oh, my Jesus, I truly believe that you are present in the most holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you to my soul. Since I cannot receive you now sacramentally, Please come spiritually to my heart. I embrace you, Lord, as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Please, do not me to be separated from you. Amen. Are there any extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion here? I need a, oh, well, I'll distribute communion by myself now. It might take a little while. Thank you. Corpus Christi, so we beat the
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that, renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. please be seated for the announcements. As I mentioned in my homily, you know, we have elections coming up. I can't tell you how to vote, right? You have to do your own research. Okay, don't be like me who used to, well, I'm a Democrat, I'm gonna vote everything Democrat. We are more than Democrats or Republicans. We're more than donkeys and elephants, okay? We're, we're, we're Catholics, right? We're, we're, we're daughters and sons of God. And so, vote with that mindset, right? Years I was voting that way. I'm a Democrat, I'm gonna vote for everything Democrat. Yeah, I elected some ugly de Democrats in my hometown of Salinas, and it, there's ugly people left and right. Politics is ugly. But you know what? Unfortunately, what I'm noticing, people who don't have faith, especially young people, the politics have become their faith. It's ugly. Ugh, I hate politics, but you know, we gotta do our, <clears throat> we gotta do our duty to vote. So yeah, if you're able to vote, do research. This week, I'm taking time to read, read the, all the propositions and make a decision out of my own faith, out of my own, you know, my, my own experience. And so take time, look at the, 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 the the propositions, look at whatever's on the ballot, research it. They gave you a little, I mean, they sent me a packet with all the information on there, so. Read it, go online, don't just, I know I, know I got card, you know, the local Democratic Party does this, vote for this, but I threw that away, I don't need, I don't need that, right? I'm gonna vote on my own free will, right? And so take time, if you have questions about anything, talk to me, especially with abortion, right? That's such a crazy issue, but you know, if you wanna, I'm, like I told the young people, it's like, hey, if you need anything, I'm here to talk to you about it. Conversation about it. If not, I mean, I'm just going to get yelled at and, you know, it, it sucks to go through that, right? So take time to vote. Take time to do research, actual research, sit down. I know it's boring, it's tough, but, you know, it's, it's for the sake of, it's a common good for the people around us, right? And there's a lot of people who can't vote here in our, our area. So we're, we're really voting for them also. Right, and so we're helping them, hopefully, live the, their life to the fullest. And so, and that's through, you know, the little power that we have as citizens is to vote. Right. I'm, gl I'm glad we're not in a dictatorial system, nor a communist socialist system where we don't have a vote, we don't have a say. Okay. Though it does seem like that all the rich people get the say in the world, but whatever. That's a different story. Okay. So take time to vote, research. If you have any questions, sit down with me. We'll have a conversation. Okay. Cool. All right, tomorrow's Halloween, yay! To some people, other people are like, boo! <laughs> we have our truck or treat for the kids, so it's free, free candy. And it's a safe place here, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. In our, in our football field, our soccer field. Um, costumes, nothing scary, nothing blasphemous. <laughs> no, nothing scary or evil, okay? We're trying to promote a Catholic Halloween Superheroes, saints, cartoon characters. I'm going to be a cartoon character from the movie Ratatouille. So I'm, that's, not, that's my costume. There's nothing evil about that. Maybe you don't want rats in your kitchen, but that's a different story. You know? But that's going to be my costume, okay? So if you want to see me in my costume, come tomorrow, okay? I, 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 I went to Oogie Boogie Fast, Bash in uh, Disneyland wearing that. It was a huge hit. Someone wanted to buy the little rat for me for $100. I'm like, that's my costume. I'm telling you just to walk around looking like a Disneyland chef. <laughs> $100. I could have made $100 that night, but no. Okay, so come. It's for the kids. Um, if you do have, if you want to donate chocolates, bags of chocolates, we're still, we'll take them because they're all going back to the kids. Right? It's really for the kids. I mean, I'll get some candies too, but it's really for the kids, right? And so, and yeah, so have fun. It's free. Okay, completely free. Okay. And then don't... In November 4, 5, and 6, we have our carnival. So November 4th is from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. November 5th from noon until 10. And on Sunday the 6th from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay? 
And so we're going to have delicious food, live music, and rides for the whole family, right? We have a couple of um, bands that we're having. And on Friday, we have Amy and her Sonora, which is her band. And so from 8 to 10 p.m. Saturday Live, a variety of music and performances, dances. And then on Sunday, we have Sonora Dinamita with Vilma Diaz from 7.30 to 9. If you're Hispanic, you probably know those. I need to YouTube these groups, okay? Come out, it's free to go to our event, but we want you to buy food. <laughs> if you don't want to buy food for yourself, you can buy it for me. I'll be around, I'll eat food. I'll have a churro, I'll, I'll, I'll taco, I'll, 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 I'll take the food. <laughs> Now that's how I get fatter. <laughs> so come out November 4, 5, and 6, okay? Also, it's the last week to purchase our pre-sale tickets for Carnival Rides and our bracelets, okay? And so it's 20 tickets for $18 or $35 for the bracelet. Now, the bracelet's only um, valid on Saturday from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. No, it's more. It was 6 p.m. It's 2 to 7. Your kids could go crazy riding these rides. And so she's ready. She's like, and so imagine, I mean, yeah, from there from two to seven, let them go crazy and enjoy a meal, enjoy live music while they go crazy in the rides, okay? Or just get the tickets, but that'll be like two rides. That's boring. You want to keep your kids occupied so you can have a break for yourself, okay? November 1st is also All Saints Day. And it's a holy day of obligation. And so we have a regular masses, 8 a.m., and 7 p.m. Okay, please come. Um, they'll be both in Spanish, though. That's the, yeah, I didn't realize that. <laughs> well, if you come to the 8 a.m., I could do it bilingually. I have the 8 a.m. mass on, no, I don't have the 8 a.m. mass. I have the 7 p.m. mass. I know I'm going to PMA for one of these days. Let me double check. I'm sorry. November 1st, which is Tuesday, I have the 8 a.m. Mass. So if you come to 8 a.m. Mass, I'll do that Mass bilingually, okay? So if you come to 8 a.m., I'll do it bilingually. Here at the parish, it is a holy day of obligation. If you don't go, we have confessions on Friday, so you can receive communion on Sunday, okay? Or you make an appointment with me, and I'll get you good to go on Sunday, okay? So November 1st, 8 a.m., 7 p.m., our Day of the Dead. Um, All Souls Day would be November 2nd. That is not a holy day of obligation. Um, but it's a nice time to come and pray. And that's when I'll be going to Pius Matthias Academy to celebrate Mass for them, for the high school students there. And then I have the evening Mass, um, 7 p.m. So if you come to 7 p.m. Mass on Wednesday, I'll do that bilingually as well, okay? So that's Day of the Dead. And we also have our envelopes to remember our dead. So come, go to the rectory, fill out the envelopes. Or there may be some in the pews there. Fill it out and turn it back into the office. It's up to you to put a donation in it. We just want you to remember you're dead. Recently, I put my grandmother's name in the book because she's the recent one that passed away with my family. And so her name is in the book along with my grandfathers and my other grandparents. And so um, the book is also in the office. So pass by the office, remember our dead. So November 2nd is All Souls Day and that's when we'll remember our dead. And all of, all of November, we'll have a little basket here with all the, all the names. I will, we will put the red, the regular prayers away in November, so that way we can just focus on praying for the dead, okay? And so fill in those um, um, envelopes, okay? And our preset for uh, Christmas trees is coming soon, so stay tuned for that. I believe we'll probably announce more of that as soon as we're done with all these events with um, truck or treat and, and the carnival. And so that's coming soon. Yay, Christmas! And so it's gonna benefit our school, so we'll have more information on that in the weeks to come. And make sure you say happy birthday to Father Ernesto. 50 years, 50 years. I still got three years to hit 40. Oh, and that's coming soon. So, oh my goodness. So say happy birthday to him. Well, welcome him to the Viejitos Club. And so, all right, anyone celebrating birthdays this week? Raise your hand. Anyone else celebrating birthdays except for Father Ernesto? Nobody? One person, two, no, no, please do it. Anyone else? One, two. Okay, let's bless these people. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for these people who will celebrate their birthdays. Oh, another one. Send your Holy Spirit upon them so they can have more years of life and they may grow in faith, hope, and love. May Almighty God bless all of you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday to all of you.
Any couples celebrating their wedding anniversary, being married to the Catholic Church? Aha, uh-huh. come down over here. Come on down, the price is right. You get holy water, cold holy water. It drives the sins away. Hi guys. Your names. <coughs> Your name, su nombre? Maria and Manuel. Cuántos años juntos? 48 years. Nice. Kids? Cuántos niños? Three. 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 Nietos? Two. Two. Is it one old? Hi. Entonces, unen sus manos, miren los ojos y vamos. Let's bless the couple. I'm going to do it in Spanish. Yo soy poderoso, por el gracias por el sacramento de santo matrimonio. Envíe su Espíritu Santo sobre esa pareja, para esa pareja para crecer en fe y amor y también para recordar sus votos que ellos hicieron en su boda. Bendice su familia, para que todos esa familia puedan estar unidos en Cristo y también puedan crecer en fe. Y con la intercesión nuestra Madre Santísima, sanos y todos los ángeles y los santos, la bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, Padre, Hijo, Espíritu Santo, te cena sobre ustedes. Holy water. Good job. Good job. Esto para dar tu esposa. Y besos sin mascarilla, por favor. Felicidades. Can't wait till it gets colder. These little bugs are out of here. I think that's it, right? Anything else? Presentation of a child? Okay, it's time for breakfast. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a good day, everybody.